We do know that ancient Rome was heavily influenced by the Hellenic culture, by ancient Greece. And we do know, of course, that the religion the Romans adopted was based on Greek religion. And yet, the question is, how different would the Greek temples be to the Roman temples? In other words, if we were to see a temple without knowing anything about it, could we immediately recognize it to be a Roman temple or a Greek temple just by looking at it? Well, let's find out. Ah, ancient civilizations. Well, this is definitely one of my favorite topics, and today we're going to look at it from a religious point of view, but from an architectural point of view as well. But look at it this way. We do know and we understand that the Greeks have influenced the Romans in terms of religion, because basically the Roman gods, although some gods were a little different at the end of the day, if you consider Athena becomes Minerva, the Greek Aphrodite becomes Venus, the Greek Posidonas becomes Neptunus. So these change names, but at the end of the day, we have the same gods. But what about the actual temples? Well, yes, there are quite a lot of differences. Before getting to those, though, if you are interested in the ancient gods, and particularly in, the, in a linguistic point of view, uh, as far as modern Greek pronunciation and ancient classical Latin pronunciation is concerned, I did make a video about this a, lo a, long, a long time ago, actually. So you might have missed it if you're a new subscriber. So check the description below and you will find a link to such video. Okay, so the real difference between a Roman temple and a Greek temple is that a Roman temple is a mixture as far as the architecture is concerned, but also as far as um, its functions are concerned. It's a mixture between uh, Greek influence and Etruscan influence. So it's partially Italic in its construction, differently from the original Greek one. Okay, so yes, both have columns, but look at it. For example, a Roman temple will put a lot of emphasis in the front facade, meaning that um, most decorations will be in the front of the temple, whereas the back of the temple most of the times will be undecorated and sometimes would even face an actual wall. Uh, this is not something that would happen on a Greek temple. But another difference is that the main entrance of the temple, as I said, would be the front entrance, the only actual entrance of the temple, and you would have a set of stairs in the Roman temple that would lead you to the front entrance. No stairs all around. On the other hand, the Greek temple instead would have a full set of stairs all around it, granting you access from any position. But another big difference between the, t the, the Greek temples and the Roman temples is the location where you would find such temples, such structures. The Roman temple would be built in urban areas. You would find it inside cities, whereas you would find the Greek temples on an elevated area of the city, the Acropolis, dominating the rest of the city. Another interesting difference is the size. Normally, Roman temples were bigger, but this should not um, surprise us. At the end of the day, we have the end of the Republic, the beginning of the Empire. The Romans were, they were a very glamorous people, so of course they made their temples bigger. But interestingly enough, if you went to enter one of these temples, you would notice that the inner rooms in a Roman temples, the cells you would find in a Roman temples, would be smaller than the ones in a Greek temple. So regardless of the fact that the temple itself as a structure would be bigger. Why? Because these inner areas in the temples would not be accessible to the public. And many, if not most, rites would be performed outside the temple. Hence, the normal open spaces or open areas that you would find in front of such temples for such rituals.
as we reach imperial times, we will start seeing some recesses as decorative um, motives for decorations. And eventually, after the second century, um, the, these inner rooms will be open to the public. Some rituals will be performed inside the temple as well, and so these will start to be decorated. But they weren't decorated up to that point because of the fact that they were not open. Also, Greek temples sort of emerge from the ground. They, they are part of uh, the area that they are uh, inhabiting, whereas a Roman temple most of the times, if not all the times, will be built on top of a pedestal. So it will sort of above the ground a little bit. And this is again another big difference between the two styles of construction. So now that we have discussed the, uh, the major differences as far as the actual structure is concerned, let's consider how these temples were used. Well, so let's understand what was a temple for the Romans. Well, a temple for the Romans was, of course, the most sacred of all buildings. The word templum is Latin after all. But we need to understand how this word uh, worked. When the Romans said templum at first, it didn't actually mean a the building itself. It meant a place used for worshipping. Okay, that was the, the area was the templum. Whereas if you actually wanted to mean the, the structure alone, you would use a word such as idis. But what's probably very peculiar to the Romans is the fact that, yes, the temple is supposedly, or allegedly, the dwelling where the god abides, the, a sacred abode, if you will. But we need to understand what the word sacred meant for the Romans for us to understand thoroughly what it meant for this building to be sacred. Because, um, yes, there were statues of the gods, which normally, if you notice, were normally represented as full of energy, as if they were almost alive and normally in bigger size than humans, human size, to give this idea of splendor and becoming more uh, powerful, uh, so to speak. But in these temples, yes, they, they, they did prayers. Yes, they would store, for example, those uh, ritual objects that were used for uh, cere ceremonies. Um, and also they would put all those offerings coming from the faithful to a specific god that that very temple was dedicated to, because a temple will be dedicated to a specific god. And of course, we can all re relate to these things as being uh, sacred, even from our point of view, if you will. Whether we are atheist or whether we are religious, we do understand the word sacred as meaning these uh, specific actions. But for the Romans, anything that was done for the people of Rome, for the country, whether it be the Republic or whether it be the Empire, would be sacred. What that meant is that, for example, let me give you two examples. The Senatus sometimes would meet inside a temple to uh, have some political meetings for example, because that was done for the people of Rome, for the country, for the glory of Rome, and therefore it was sacred. A great example of this is the temple of Jupiter Optimus Capitolinus Maximus, which is the most important temple, uh, temple dedicated to Jupiter, the father of the gods, which we find in the Capitoline Hill in Rome. Now, this temple was normally the place where most military parades, particularly triumph parades of, of victories, for example, would end up. They would go there and the whole army would stop, stop in front of the temple. But the temple of Saturn, or Saturn, is another example of these, because in this temple they did two things that perhaps we wouldn't really consider as being sacred, but the Romans certainly did. The first one is where you uh, put the Erarium or Aerarium, which was basically the uh, treasury, or as I think they call it in Britain, exchequer. I think, if I if I remember right. And another thing that they did in this, so they kept the money there. And then another thing they did is that they would have a podium or a place where they would uh, affix uh, public documents. All right, well, I hope that you enjoyed this video about ancient Rome and ancient Greece. And if you did, please remember thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more content from the Metatron. I would like to take a moment now to thank all the people who have decided to back up my GoFundMe campaign that I did and that I opened uh, yesterday in yesterday's video. Thank you very much for your monetary support. I will put your generously given money to good use. I promise that.
I've decided to express my thanks to all of you personally, so it will take a little bit of time, but I have already sent 50 uh, emails to the people who have donated, to uh, very small e emails of course, but they are, they are personal, they're real, they're not like copy-pasted, because I do want to take the time to thank the people who are supporting me, I will do the same thing for all my Patreons, and then I'll try to spare some time to answer all of you in the comment section. Of course, if you have any questions about the things I talk about, please leave your comments down below. I will see you tomorrow for my next daily upload. And remember, the Metatron has spread its wings. What it is.